In his analysis of Luke 2.17, R.C. Sproul delves into the historical and theological significance of Jesus' birth, distinguishing it from the mythological narratives common in ancient religions. He emphasizes the precision of Luke's historical account, particularly accentuating the role of Caesar Augustus, one of the most influential Roman emperors. Augustus's reign, known for initiating the Pax Romana, a period of unprecedented peace and prosperity in the Roman Empire, is crucial in setting the backdrop for this biblical event. Sproul draws attention to the theological exploration of time, referencing Oscar Coleman's work, Christ and Time. Coleman differentiates between chronos, sequential time, and kairos, a moment of destiny or divine intervention. The New Testament concept of pleroma, which Sproul explains as the fullness of time, signifies a period ripe for significant events, exemplified by the birth of Christ. This concept suggests that historical moments are not merely chronological, but can be imbued with divine purpose and significance. The religious climate of Augustus's era, marked by the emperor's deification in the title, Dominus et Deus, Lord and God, sets a contrasting background to the Christian narrative. This self-deification later led to conflicts for early Christians, who refused emperor worship, affirming a pivotal moment of crisis and faith in Christian history. The narrative culminates with Joseph and Mary's journey to Bethlehem, mandated by the census for taxation. Sproul asserts the divine orchestration behind these events, with Augustus unknowingly fulfilling a prophetic role. This journey leads to Jesus' birth in a manger in Bethlehem, fulfilling the prophecy of Micah. Sproul interprets this as a chirotic moment, a divinely appointed time that holds significant historic and prophetic importance in Christian theology. The humble circumstances of Jesus' birth, as detailed by Luke, contrast sharply with the grandeur of Roman imperial power, highlighting a key Christian theme of humility and divine purpose. Also, Sproul's interpretation of Luke 2, 8.20 offers a profound insight into the account of the shepherds at the birth of Jesus. He indicates the significance of God's choice to reveal the Messiah's birth to shepherds, individuals who were marginalized and viewed with disdain in their society. This choice is a recurring theme in the Bible, where God frequently selects those considered insignificant or lowly for pivotal roles. Prominent biblical figures like Moses, a shepherd in the Midianite desert, and David, a shepherd boy who became king, exemplify this pattern. The narrative describes shepherds tending their flocks, likely intended for temple sacrifices, who were visited by an angel announcing the birth of Jesus. This event, as Sproul maintains, marks the first proclamation of the gospel in the New Testament. The angel's message, deeply personal, declares the birth of a Savior in Bethlehem, identifying him as Christ the Lord. Moreover, Sproul dives into the aftermath of the angelic announcement. The shepherds, spurred by the heavenly message, travel to Bethlehem to witness the newborn Jesus, finding him in a manger, which early traditions suggest was located in a cave. This visit transforms these humble shepherds into the first evangelists of the Christian faith. Despite their societal status, where their testimony was deemed unreliable in legal matters, they were chosen by God to spread the news of Christ's birth. This choice points out a central theme in the narrative, God's affinity for the humble and overlooked. Furthermore, Sproul explores how Luke, the gospel writer, obtained such detailed information about Jesus' birth. He suggests that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was likely Luke's primary source. The gospel indicates that Mary deeply pondered and treasured these events, implying that her vivid memories provided Luke with a rich and detailed account of Jesus' early life, thereby enriching the gospel narrative with intimate and personal details. In conclusion, Sproul offers an in-depth look at the historical and theological dimensions of Jesus' birth, distinguishing it from mythological narratives common in ancient religions. Sproul underlines the accuracy of Luke's account, particularly in the context of Caesar Augustus's reign, which marked the Pax Romana, a period of unparalleled peace and prosperity in the Roman Empire. This historical backdrop is crucial for understanding the biblical event. In addition, Sproul underscores the theological concept of time, drawing from Oscar Coleman's distinctions between chronos, sequential time, and kairos, a moment of destiny or divine intervention. He explains pleroma as the fullness of time, indicating a period ripe for significant events, exemplified by the birth of Christ. 
This interpretation suggests that historical moments can be imbued with divine purpose. Further, the religious climate under Augustus, marked by his deification and the title Dominus et Deus, Lord and God, provides a stark contrast to the Christian narrative. This era's self-deification posed significant challenges for early Christians, who resisted emperor worship. Sproul notes the divine orchestration behind Joseph and Mary's journey to Bethlehem, mandated by the census. This journey, culminating in Jesus' birth in a manger, is seen as fulfilling the prophecy of Micah, representing a chirotic moment of historic and prophetic importance in Christian theology. Besides, Sproul's interpretation of Luke 2, 820 digs into the account of the shepherds at Jesus' birth. He emphasizes the significance of God choosing shepherds, socially marginalized figures, to first hear of the Messiah's birth. This reflects a recurring biblical theme where God selects the seemingly insignificant for pivotal roles. The shepherds' visit to Jesus, following the angelic announcement, symbolizes their transformation into the first evangelists of the Christian faith. Lastly, Sproul speculates that Mary, Jesus' mother, likely provided Luke with detailed information about these events, adding a personal dimension to the gospel narrative. This analysis accentuates themes of humility, divine selection, and the intertwining of historical events with theological meaning.